Good evening. Uh, yeah, you're online, on air, and uh, on record. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Commander JP, and welcome to the Strange Universe Radio Update. For everybody out there, this is Dr. Sean David Morton, and I just want to say uh, God bless you and infinite blessings to everyone there. And let's just give you the uh, give you the report of uh, bizarre uh, opinions and happenings around the universe uh, this week. First off, let me start on a personal note. Obviously, I have to thank people like Beth Boyer and Wendy Angel and Kevin Shaw and um, uh, Krista Robinson and uh, uh, Richard Shankberg and uh, uh, Scheinberg. I'm sorry, and all those people that have uh, that have helped me in here. And also what I'm asking everybody to do is, uh, uh, is help Melissa. Melissa is currently out. She's at, the, uh, she's at a halfway house in uh, Watts on the corner of Crip Street and Blood Boulevard. And um, what's really happened here is that uh, two supposed friends of ours, actually posing as our friends, have now basically robbed us blind and admitted to the fact that they've stolen about $15,000 from us. They, they somehow uh, managed to steal my car. And, uh, and sell it, stole my comic book collection, sold it, sold all my books, uh, gave away my clothes, uh, everything they could get their grubby little hands on, basically. Uh, you know, they sold and then kept the money and then admitted to stealing it. Now, <laughs> they also offered, there was a family that was offering to take Melissa in because she goes to what's called home confinement uh, next month, and now she doesn't have a place to live. So she's going to be broke, homeless, no clothes, no shoes, basically out on the street. I mean, I mean, literally living like a homeless person now uh, uh, as of uh, uh, as of the middle of next month. So, if anybody wants to uh, wants to help her, uh, she set up a PayPal account. It's PayPal.me. That's PayPal.me forward slash help Melissa. So that's PayPal.me forward slash help Melissa. It also didn't help that the one car that we had left they broke, so now it needs about twelve hundred dollars worth of repairs. And uh, she's out there kind of desperately trying to get a job, you know, whatever else. Now, uh, also because of massive delays by the FedGov scum who got their appeal completely wrong, her reply to their, uh, to, her reply to their reply to her appeal is due on February 21st because it's been all completely extended. And then who knows how long the Ninth Circuit Court is going to go after that. Uh, as far as mine goes, I completely had, I completely bypassed the appeal process. I put in six dispository expedited emergency motions to uh, for selective prosecution, vindictive prosecution, no jurisdiction, et cetera, et cetera. None of those, none of them were answered by the FedGov scum, and um, they left the field of battle. So they, they had until December 1st of last year to answer. None of them have been answered, and now I'm just waiting for the screwed-up Ninth Circuit Court to uh, uh, to rule on my motions, and as soon as they rule, once again they are unopposed and uncontested. Then I'm gone. I'm you know I'm out of here. Everything is expunged. Uh, I've basically been found completely not guilty of everything because they've you know they 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 have not uh, contested anything. All right, so here's so let me give you the updates as to as to why it's worth it for you guys to help support us. Once again, uh, PayPal.me forward slash help Melissa. All right. Uh, three weeks ago, Sunday, there was a an unscheduled military exercise in downtown Los Angeles. This included, uh, strangely enough, a consortium of not only helicopters, various explosions, uh, shock troops, but also a weird combination of uh, hazardous material waste uh, troops, if you will, in hazmat suits and uh, and nuclear radiation people at the same time. What I believe intuitively and having remote viewed this event, I think that there was what was called a red mercury device that was actually found in downtown Los Angeles and uh, was removed by the military. And now it's interesting, too, because now there, there are brand new QAnon posts, and it's interesting that QAnon uh, uh, posted his post uh, within a minute of, of Donald Trump's post. So uh, we now know that QAnon is a source inside the White House who is probably sitting in the Oval Office actually with Trump uh, because the minute the Q the Q anon thing came down about watch out for something big, and also a warning of false flags, which as I said, this would have been a false flag a few weeks ago, uh, you get a Trump tweet uh, that comes uh, that comes right through that. It is interesting because also uh, just a few minutes ago, Trump was on the news uh, uh, actually giving a speech about Venezuela. Well, then the socialist government in Venezuela came to power in the first place by Barack Obama. Closing. If you remember the Deepwater Horizon, when the uh, the British Petroleum uh, Oil Platform 
uh, exploded in the Gulf of Mexico, Obama, completely illegally and unlawfully, he closed every single oil platform in the Gulf, and lawsuits had to be filed to reopen them, and shut down drilling in the United States exclusively so that he could help and assist the socialist government in Venezuela. Well, now that you have this, this battle between Maduro and Eduardo, uh, it is interesting because the United States is now in the process of moving troops into Colombia, and uh, it will use Colombia as a staging point into Venezuela. Uh, Trump uh, was talking about how, uh, how these various supplies, humanitarian supplies, are being brought to the border. Well, they're not humanitarian supplies. They're weapons. So what's going to happen is, is that at some point, it's interesting that Trump for the first time has talked about actually actively toppling the communist governments in Nicaragua, uh, in Cuba, and also in, um, uh, and also in Venezuela. So that's what's coming next. If we manage to topple, uh, Maduro in, in, uh, in Venezuela and replace him with, uh, with, uh, Giardo, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but, uh, that means a, a massive oil influx into the United States and you're talking about the price of oil dropping to once again between the 25 and 35 dollar, uh, dollar range, which would be a good thing. All right, uh, there's been a lot of confusion about this thing that Trump signed and then declaring the national emergency. Here's how it's going to go down. What's going to happen is, is that where they're going to start building the border wall with the $1.7 billion that he's got is going to be in Texas. And in Texas is where they're going to sue, and they'll probably lose, they'll lose in, the, in the federal judicial court and then probably lose at the uh, – and then what will happen is, is they'll take it up to the Fifth Circuit Court. Well, the Fifth Circuit Court is filled with nothing but Republican conservatives, and I think that Trump is actually then going to win in the Fifth Circuit Court. So the plan is going to be to start building the wall – to start building the, the wall in Texas – Take the court challenge, the possibility that he could lose there, then take it to the Fifth Circuit Court and get a win in the Fifth Circuit Court uh, you know, for the president, which is where the wall is, is going to start. Also, all these provisions that they're talking about, that the Democrats, these, these, these mines, if you will, uh, the Democrats put in, they're only good until September because that, it's a resolution, really. And so when that resolution uh, runs out, uh, as far as the budget thing goes, all, all that stuff goes away. So Trump is playing 4D chess here. And... Um, is several head, and steps ahead of the Democrats. And also, why this isn't front-page news, I don't know. But the, but the trial of El Chapo. El Chapo has now admitted that he gave hundreds of millions of dollars to the Democrats, that he gave it to Bill Clinton, to Hillary Clinton, $15 million to Hillary Clinton when she was Secretary of State, to Adam Schiff, to uh, all these, to, to the Democratic Party, to uh, Richard, uh, to uh, Charles Schumer, uh, specifically for them to keep the border open. So if you people are all curious as to why the Democrats are, are fighting tooth and nail almost to the death to not have the border wall up and to keep the border open, it's because they're being paid by Mexican drug lords to be able to keep the border open. And uh, then it goes down to John Huber. John Huber has something like, uh, he's got 760 investigators that are investigating every, all things Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Chelsea Clinton, uh, there are, I think, the, uh, the the sealed indictments across the United States are up to almost 76,000 now. So This call is from a federal prison. So we're just waiting for the Inspector General and for John Huber and for the other shoe to drop. As, and I think now that Bill Barr has been uh, finally confirmed as Attorney General, although I don't have a lot of faith in him. Remember, he was Attorney General under the Bush administration. There's a reason why Rand Paul voted against him, because he was the guy that was responsible for the expanding of the of the massive Big Brother uh, super state with the Homeland Security and the massive surveillance and, uh, and whatever else. Um, once again, Ruth Bader Ginsburg pops up in the news. Once, uh, people saw her at a public event that was thrown by her daughter, which was a musical that her daughter put together about her life. But once again, there were no photos of her, no pictures. And who are her doctors? What exactly is going on with her? She, had, she went in for lung cancer, but now we're being told she has pancreatic cancer. My mother died of pancreatic cancer, and she lasted barely a year. Steve Jobs died of pancreatic cancer. He lasted, I think, like four months after he got it. So the real question is, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg is going to be dead soon. And all these people who celebrate her, I remind you that RBG, all her rulings were uh, to force women to force women into the draft, to put women in military combat, to uh, 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 to put women into the Boy Scouts, to lower the age of sexual consent for women to 12 years old. I mean, if you look at her record, it's it's on sex and her taking rights away from women. It, it's I mean, it's really, really, really disgusting. And um, 
Uh, let me see what else. Uh, what else do I have here? Uh, I talked about the uh, talked about the thieves that stole the money from our state. Um, just a little bit more about uh, about QAnon. QAnon just, as I said, just uh, just dropped another bomb, saying that uh, that something big is coming. Well, again, everybody's hanging fire about this. For example, I talked about the Zimbabwean Zim as having an actual chance of being revalued. As far as the dinar goes, all these people. There's Tony Tuesday out there. There's this lady named Judy that's putting things out there that all say the dinar is going to be revalued. Well, okay. Yeah, the dinar has been revalued. I mean, he went from zero 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 one four to like zero 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 et cetera eight. So if he had millions of dollars in dinar, maybe it would have gone up like fifty percent. However, the Zimbabwean Zim actually has a, has an opportunity that Zimbabwe, which I believe used to be Rhodesia, um, uh, has the ability to be able to link their currency into their their massive natural resources like like coltan and you know, oil and gold and, and uh, diamonds and all this other stuff. So, for example, I have a $1 trillion Zimbabwean note. If the Zimbabwean Zim revalues to one penny, as an example, uh, that $1 trillion note will be worth about $20,000. So Zimbabwean bonds and Zimbabwean notes, if, if people have them, uh, I think do have a chance of actually being uh, uh, legitimately revalued. Uh, as far as uh, people have been asking me about gold and silver as well, I do not know why silver has not risen more than it has. Gold is still about thirteen hundred dollars or so. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's about I think it's between twelve fifty and about thirteen hundred, but it's being kept artificially low by the uh, by the international banking cartels. And let me remind people uh, you know, the last thing one of the one of the big changes that Trump made in the Oval Office was that he has right behind him on his desk, he's got the Resolute desk, right behind him is a statue of Andrew Jackson on his horse. And the one painting that he had put in was a huge painting of Andrew Jackson that that that, uh, that hangs on the wall on the left side of his office. Well, Andrew Jackson, along with being the old Indian killer and caning two guys to death on the steps of the White House, he took on the central banks. And, you know, I mean, why is Andrew Jackson's face on a central bank note, you know, on a Federal Reserve note? And so for Trump to have that kind of admiration for Jackson and for Jackson to be that much of a rebel and take on the banks, you know, there's still the good possibility. And there, there, is, there are messages in the wind out there that the IRS is either going away or is going, or is going to be massively uh, uh, redesigned and restructured. Now, unfortunately, with the, with the demon rats in, in Congress, well, that stops any, any new tax cut that he was going to give for the middle class that may stop a reorganization of the, uh, of the system. But I think that his his telegraphing of his support for for uh, uh, for General Jackson has so much to do with him basically erasing the uh, uh, erasing the Federal Reserve Bank of of him because he's got to do something. I mean, he still has four more people that he needs to uh, that he needs to nominate as far as the uh, the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve. He's already said the Federal Reserve is is out of control, even though they haven't gone up on the interest rates. I hope we're still there. Um, haven't gone up on the interest rates or you know done that, but uh, just watch for major moves of the Fed. I mean, the federal debt hit 22 trillion this week, and um, I don't know why. Uh, uh, I, I told you that there was a, a very interesting scheme by the Treasury uh, not so long ago, and the uh, uh, the Treasury was printing, they were printing platinum coins and they were minting these platinum coins, and they said, well, how much would you, should we make these for? And somebody suggested, well, let's make them a trillion dollars a piece. We'll print up 16 of them, and we'll take it over to the Federal Reserve, and we'll pay off the debt. That's still something viable, and Trump knows all this. And the fact that Trump, his uncle, uh, uh, Dr. Jonathan Trump at MIT, there's no president in our lifetime that knows more about the technology, that knows more about the, you know, the new age and UFOs and rock and whatever else. So there is the possibility that Trump could lead a, a, a massive revolution uh, in, in, in science and technology that, that would help the United States of America and the whole world. Once again, please help Melissa. She's going to be homeless in 30 days. She desperately needs funding, desperately needs help, needs a place to live that, that's, uh, uh, that's help. Uh, PayPal.me uh, uh, forward slash help Melissa. And uh, JP, I'll talk to you next week, and I can't thank you enough for putting this up. And uh, God bless you, brother. I'll